What up, what up? This is your host, Following Christ, and this is your weekly wake-up call. Don't forget that you can follow me on YouTube at the name Z-O-E-F-R-E-A-K, the number 9, the number 5. Altogether, that says Z-O-E Freak 95. Don't forget that you can subscribe to this channel. You can share with your friends and your family, co-workers, even your enemies, um, these videos. And you can also favorite so that you can continue to get these videos week after week as they come out. Don't forget you can also like our page on Facebook at the name Following Jesus Christ. We have a combined page, me and the Watchman 118. But we shall shortly be changing the name of the page to the Watchman for Christ. But if you go ahead and like us now, you won't have to worry about the name change because you will already be there. Um, today we have a question that seems to puzzle a lot of people. Um, and we're going to do our best to answer it according to scripture and scripture alone. The question is, if God is good or if there is a God at all, why is there so much suffering or suffering in the world? That is a very good question and I'm glad that it was asked. Well, first and foremost, in order to answer this question, um, we have to turn to the beginning of the Bible and start in the book of Genesis in the book of Genesis, it says when God created everything, it says, and God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day in Genesis chapter one, verse 31. In that same chapter over and over and over again, everything that God makes on the first day, it says it was good. On the second day, it says it was good. The third day, good. Fourth day, fifth day, good. And on the sixth day after the creation of man, he said, Everything was very good. So this lets us know that when God made things, everything that came out of his hand was very good. So the Bible also says that God is perfect. And it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So God is a perfect being, and everything that came out of his hands when he created the world was good. So if he's perfect, then you would have to understand that everything that he created was perfect. So then that leads us to ask, what happened to this world then if God is perfect? All right. The Bible says, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. That's Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9. All right. But then you're going to, some people may ask this question. Well, what does that verse or this dragon or serpent being cast out of heaven, what does this have to do with the sin and suffering in our world or on this planet? Um, and who is this devil anyway? All right, starting in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12, and ending at verse 19. I'm going to read so that you can hear. It says, Son of man, taketh up a lamentation unto the king of Tyrus. Now let us understand. It is, they're writing a lamentation or, or a dissertation to the king of Tyre. All right. Keep that in mind and listen to the descriptions of things that are going on in, this, in these verses of scripture. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God. Thou sealeth up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been and eaten the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, and the diamond. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle in gold. The workmanships of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou walked up and down in the midst of fiery stones. Thou was perfect in thy way from the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise have thy, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Thou hast sinned, therefore 
I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was filled up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitudes of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shalt thou be any more. All right, and we're also going to look in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. And it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. So we can see that from these passages in Scripture that there is an enemy or an opponent to God. But where is this enemy? Ezekiel chapter 28 says that he was in Eden. So that shows you there's a contrast when people try to say that they were speaking to the king of Tyre. The king of Tyre was never in Eden. He was never created. He was never perfect in his ways. He was never perfect in beauty. He never sealed up the sum. He never had perfect knowledge. Okay. He never walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. He never was on the holy mountain of God. He's definitely not a covering cherub. The Bible tells us that a covering cherub is an angel. So we definitely know that Ezekiel chapter 28 is not referring to the king of Tyre. It is describing the king of Tyre as an evil entity, like the evil entity that stands behind him. There's a bigger evil behind the king of Tyre than just the human front. All right. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Let me load this up real quick. And it says, Now the serpent was more subtle, than any, more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. All right. This shows that a serpent caused Adam and Eve, the first man and woman on earth that sinned against God. He caused them to sin against God. Since we know first and foremost that serpents are snakes do not or cannot talk. Scripture tells us that the devil was in Eden, according to Ezekiel chapter 28. So we can deduce from Ezekiel chapter 28 and Genesis chapter 3 that this serpent that was speaking was actually the enemy of God. All right. But that still leaves the question. What does this have to do with why there is suffering? Why is there still suffering? The Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. That's Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Because Adam sinned, the enemy of God was given dominion over this planet. Hear these scriptures for proof. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 1. Verses 26 and 28. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the image, creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he man, he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth 
upon the earth. All right. At first, man was given dominion over earth, but soon lost it by sinning and was driven out of Eden. And you can read this in Genesis chapter 3, verses 24. So he drove out the man he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. All right. Now, in Matthew chapter 13, Chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, I'll read for you to hear. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But, then, but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Now, I'm going to read the verses that explain this parable. Verses 36 through 43 explain what Christ is trying to tell us. It says, And Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. So God sows the good seed. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth of the sun in the kingdom of their God, who hath ears to hear. Let him hear. So we see from these verses that Christ says sin, like the tares that were sold, is sown by the devil and not God. So to show this point further, we need to read Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. And it says, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite! Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years be loose from this, bound, this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. So Christ points out specifically that Satan bound this woman in her condition or her infirmity and not God. He, he makes no claim to sin. All right? The Bible shows that sin and sin alone originated with Satan. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. All right? So the devil is the originator of sin and tempter of sin to man. God cannot lie or sin. So sin did not or cannot come from God. This would mean that God would be a partaker of sin. Okay? In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. That's Titus chapter 1 verse 2. God is not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23 verse 19. See, God in no way, shape, form, or fashion lies 
sins does anything that is abominable. God is a perfect being. If God created evil, that means that God has is a partaker of, of, of what is going on in this world, and he is not. Sin and evil or suffering occurs on this earth due to the fact that the enemy of God has come to the earth to wage a cosmic war against the God Almighty and his creation, mainly us, me and you, humanity. The Bible tells us, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. So we see that Satan is here on the earth with us and not roasting people in hell like many stories have depicted of him having red horn and a pitchfork and he's turning people over and over uh, under the ground flipping to make sure they cook evenly no he is here accusing you and i before god day and night he tempts us to sin and then he turns around and tells god that uh, look at what they did look at what we're doing and just like he did to turn the angels against god in heaven God has no part in man's sin. God hates sins. To prove this fact, let's read James chapter 1, verse 13 to 15. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Okay, so... You have to understand that many ask, then why would a good God create a devil? Ezekiel chapter 28 tells us God created a perfect covering cherub or an angel, not an evil devil. You have to understand what the covering cherubs are. When you look into the sanctuary, you have the holy place with the table of showbread, the altar of incense, and the seven branch candlestick. Then the next was the most holy place that had the Ark of the Covenant that had two golden angels that were called covering cherubs that they covered something in the middle, which was considered the mercy seat. The mercy seat was a direct depiction of what the throne of God should be because that's where God conversed to his people from. And I out of the smoke or out of the fire from the middle of these two covering cherubs above the Ark of the Covenant. Satan or Lucifer as he's called was a covering cherub that literally covered the throne of God. He was a law protector, ended up being a law breaker. All right. So Isaiah chapter 14 shows us that the devil sought to exalt himself above everything that was called God. Ezekiel 28 calls this his iniquity. It explains what the iniquity is in Isaiah chapter 14 because Ezekiel chapter 28 tells us uh, because of his iniquities, he would be brung down. His iniquities was that he was trying to be God. All right. And it says God could have destroyed Satan in the war in heaven. When Satan rebelled against God, God could have destroyed him. But it would have made Satan's accusations about God seem true because Satan accused God of being unfair and that his government could not be lived out. It was too tough. God wasn't fair. It wasn't it wasn't right. Uh, we don't need God. These are the same arguments that you hear today that you that people have heard for centuries. This is the same argument of atheism. This is the same argument of people that don't believe in the Ten Commandments. God, they, they don't need to be kept. They can't be kept. We can't do those. This is the same lie that the devil told in heaven. Heaven. And when he drew a third of the stars in heaven, when those stars are in the Bible contracted to be angels, he drew a third of the host of heaven with him off of the lie that you cannot keep God's commandment. What we know that that is not true because Christ came to the earth and he kept them 100 percent to the T by the grace of God, relying only on his father's will. You have to understand, look at it like a political race. If God would have stamped out the devil when the devil re rebelled, he could have just boom, popped him with a lightning bolt. But you got to understand, look at this like a President Obama. Um, if he was allowed to run for a third time in 2016, and let's say I was his running mate, all right, if I get on TV and I bring up all these accusations against him, and he's a liar, he's a thief, uh, all he does is steal, he sleeps around on his wife, he's no good, he's an alcoholic, he's a drunk, you can't trust him, his ways are so bad, they're so uh, demeaning, they're going to bring us all to ruin, they're going to kill us, he's no good, you can't live by his rule. All right, if I say all these things about him and I accuse him of all these things, if the next day I turn up missing and I'm dead, um... Is going to make you wonder. You're going to be like, wow, um, what happened? Um, this guy was sitting here saying all this stuff about Obama 
and now all of a sudden he just poof he's he's gone he's dead i don't i mean is the stuff that he was saying was true it makes it have a little more levity on it because the guy ended up missing because he came out and said this stuff it makes it seem like it's true see and that's the same thing that would have happened with god if god would have destroyed satan as soon as he rebelled it would have made the other angels in heaven question god's true purpose because the devil being a covering cherub knew the foundations or the inner working of god like no one else could um so he knew that if god destroyed him it would be like an act of a, it'd be a massive cover up. It would seem like there's a massive cover up and fear of reprisal would be the main uh, reason for following God and not love. See, God knew in his infinite wisdom that the only true way to let someone know whether who was true or not was to let the course of events play out it goes right back to the parable that christ tells in matthew 13 let both the wheat and the tares grow together until the time of the harvest that way that you could see which one was better okay it says so a time was needed to show a difference between god's government and that government that satan seeks to have remember satan even lied to eve to have her distrust god's laws and he told her that God was hiding things from her. God didn't want her to be as wise as he was. God was seeking to keep her down. All right. And the Bible tells a totally different story because the truth of whose government was better uh, uh, revealed in Romans chapter five, verse eight. Um, that 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 showed whose government was truthfully the better one. Because the difference between God's government and Satan's is Satan seeks himself. We seek ourselves. Sin makes us seek ourselves. Romans chapter 6 verse 16 says, Do you not know to whom you present yourselves servants to obey? You are that one servant whom you obey, either to sin leading to death or righteousness leading to obedience. If you obey Satan, you are going to take on Satan's qualities. You are going to seek yourself. You are going to seek I. Like he said, I will exalt myself above the stars of heaven. I will sit on the mount of the congregation. I will be like the most high. You only seek yourself. But see, when you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you seek only what others need and their wants and desires, not your own. Christ, being God, left his heavenly home, came here to die. For you and for me. He showed whose government really is the best. All right. So out of these. Out of, out, so of the. Um, so of, of whose government was better is revealed in the scripture. So the next time you think to blame God for suffering or you hear others blaming God for suffering. Just remember Ephesians chapter six, verse 12. And I'm posting it here on the screen. And. That one day, sin is going to be forever destroyed. The devil will be no more. Just like the verses that you heard me recite previously. The devil will be no more. Um, and I know a lot of people may not agree with any of these things that I'm saying because they don't believe that the Bible is true. And even if they do believe the Bible is true, there's a lot of miscontorted uh, um, philosophies on the scripture. Um, a lot of people don't even believe that the devil was an angel in heaven, but the Bible clearly shows it. And I just I just um, related this, this information to you. But irregardless, whether you believe it, um, whether you like it, um, the truth stays the truth no matter what, even if you don't accept it. God bless.